Hello everybody, welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. I am your instructor, Paul DC, and this is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Well, we are at the time of this taping closing in on 1,300 subscribers. So I want to thank each and every one of you. I couldn't have done it without you. But if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. Remember, it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything at all. Well, before we get into this uh, next lesson, I had a comment, a question on my YouTube channel saying, we, uh, I really would like to see more of the gemstones. You only leave the photos up for one to two seconds. And I want to see a lot more of the gems than I do of the speaker. Hey, wait a minute. I'm the speaker. <laughs> So I get it. You want to see more of the gems and less of my face. Okay. Thanks a lot. Well, this is going to be part five of the uh, Garnet mini series. Uh, this lesson is about Grossular Garnet. Now, just as a reminder of, the, of those of you who have not yet watched Garnet 101, I'm going to show you again in a chart that this Grossular Garnet is the second of the three calcium members of the Garnet group. The others are the Androdite Garnet and the Uveravite Garnet. Now this particular episode is probably going to be the longest of them. So my apologies in advance, but there's a reason why. Grossular Garnet has six different distinct varieties of Garnet in that group. It is Hessenite Garnet, Leuco Garnet, Hydroglossular Garnet, Marilani Mint Garnet, Molly Garnet, and Savorite Garnet. So that's really a mouthful. And I'll go through them briefly one by one, saving a little special time uh, for my favorite, which is the Savorite Garnet, is the favorite of this group. So first we're going to get into, uh, again, the vital statistics, because although garnets all have a lot of similarities, they have some differences as well. So once again, just like all the other lessons I talked about, the birthstone for the month of January is the garnet. It doesn't matter what variety, whether it is the uh, almondine garnet, the pyrite garnet, the savorite garnet, any of them, including the grossular garnet group, it's the birthstone for the month of January. It is the anniversary stone for the second wedding anniversary. So if you're looking for racking your brain for that second anniversary gift for your wife or your husband, garnet is going to be the appropriate uh, gem gift. Zodiac stone for Aquarius, and that would be anywhere from January the 21st to February the 21st, of which I am a member. My, birth, my uh, birthday is February the 15th. Now the chem chemical composition, again, that's how we tell this variety of garnet from some of the other varieties of garnet, and it is a calcium aluminum silicate. Remember, this is part of the calcium group as opposed to the, um, the other group that we talked about uh, in the groups of garnet. Okay, so that is the uh, chemical composition. The crystal structure is cubic, and that's going to be remain uh, throughout all of the garnet groups that there are. The crystal structure is cubic, which puts it the same as a diamond in the, in the structure. Okay, so the hardness, now remember the Mohs scale of hardness talks about the relative hardness of a gem and, and specifically what gem can scratch another gem. It's rated one through 10. This is a six and a half to seven and a half. Now, some of the members of this group will be less, some will be a little bit more, but that's considered to be pretty good on the hardness scale, something that's appropriate for everyday wear. Now we go, get into that toughness scale and that's the ability to withstand cracking or chipping and it's considered fair to good. A pretty good range there. Your quartz in uh, toughness is going to be good for wearing every single day. Garnet, pretty much good for wearing every single day as well. Then we get into that refractive index that measures the sparkle of a gemstone. Now remember the garnets, uh, all of the garnet groups are pretty high on that refractive index. They sparkle really, really well for a colored gemstone. And the range here is about a 1.73 to 1.757. Again, very high for color gems. You have diamonds at 2.42 or something like that. And then you have your zircon, like I think is a 1.9 something. So in that high 1.7 1, 1. Uh, area is really, really good 
There are some garnets that are a little bit higher that we already talked about in the past. Finally, we get into the specific gravity. Now, this is another test that you can determine with where the gem falls in in what it is because you you have the chemical composition you have the the, the uh, crystal systems all of these things that you the hardness the toughness and the specific gravity is the relative heft of that gemstone how does it weigh uh, in cor uh, compared to its size so this is 3.65 now this is a little bit lower for this group some of the other uh, garnet groups were bleeding into the four range. So this sets this particular grossular group as a little bit less of a specific gravity than the others. Okay, so let's go in order of what I told you, all these different members of the grossular garnet group. The first one, the one that we're going to get to is called hessonite garnet. Now the hessonite garnet, and you're going to see on your screen, it ranges from a yellow to an orange to an almost red kind of cinnamon color. And it is found mostly in Canada, Sri Lanka. I actually have some, I'll try and find for you some pictures of some mining of hessonite garnet in Sri Lanka. And then also um, it is found in Tanzania. Now the name hessonite comes from a Greek word, heson, or they might even pronounce it eson, which meant inferior. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, I don't want a gem that's inferior. No, they called it inferior. It was referring to the fact that its hardness was lesser than that of others in the garnet group. So it had an inferior hardness to the others. Other than that, a name is just a name. It's called hessonite garnet. Um, now, while most garnets, and I've talked about this, I think, on every single lesson, very little treatments are ever done on garnets. In this case, in the hessonite garnet, because there's a little bit more fracturing because it doesn't have that hardness, uh, some, and probably not very much, fracture filling is utilized in the hessonite variety of garnet. What is fracture filling? It's kind of like what they do with emeralds, where emeralds usually are visibly included to the naked eye. Sometimes they'll fill those fractures to make it appear to be uh, less, less inclusions in there. Sometimes that happens with hessonite garnet, but not a lot. Okay, next on our family of the grossular garnet is going to be the luco garnet, spelled L-E-U-K-O, or L-E-U-C-O, actually L-E-U-C-O. Uh, the luco garnet, is actually a colorless garnet. And a true, completely colorless garnet is gonna be extremely rare, and yes, you guessed it, extremely expensive. Well, the truth of the matter is most of the times when they're mining this Luco garnet, it's going to have tinges of colors like yellow or green underneath that sort of white that you see in the Luco garnet. Now, where is this one found? It can be found in Canada, Mexico, Tanzania, and Burma. There's a really, really nice clean stone I'm going to show you right now that was that actually came from Burma. Now, as I mentioned, because of its extreme rarity, especially if it's a completely colorless white garnet, it's going to be very expensive and very rare. And therefore, you don't see a lot of Luco garnets that are set in gemstone jewelry. It's really more of that fine collector stone. People that like things that are rare, really rare are going to love that Luco garnet. Okay, next up on our list of varieties of the grossular garnet is going to be the hydroglossular hydro garnet. Now, what is hydroglossular garnet? It is a translucent to opaque garnet. And in the case of this, when you look at the chemical composition, hydroxide partially replaces some of the silica. So you can have a little bit more of a hydrous solution that creates this particular garnet. Now being translucent to opaque, and it can, it can come in a variety of colors. It can be in uh, green, uh, bluish green, uh, pink, white, or gray and, and sort of where where you mine it depends on some of those colors that you're going to see because again those colors come from the trace elements in the area 
where it is mined that adds to the color of the stone. Now, one of the misnomers of the hydroglossular, I don't know why I can't say that today, uh, but one of the, the um, misnomers is some people refer to the green um, hydroglossular garnet that comes from South Africa as South African jade. Because when you look at it, being a translucent to opaque, it could look like some jade. But mark my words, it's not jade. It's actually a very rare form of garnet. So that would be the material that comes from South Africa. Now we take a look at some of this uh, pink variety. And you can find those pink varieties in South Africa, Canada, and the USA. Now when you're getting into the white varieties um, or the gray varieties, that's pretty much exclusively what's mined out of China and Myanmar. Now Myanmar, of course, is what we used to be called Burma. So that would be where you would find the hydro glossular variety of the garnet. All right, so the next victim in our glossular garnet is going to be the Marilani mint garnet. Now this was a relatively more recent discovery and the Marilani mint uh, comes from Tanzania. It's kind of a green, lighter shade of, of green than a Savorite uh, and sometimes almost a blue green, like a mint, true mint color. And the reason they call it the Marilani Mint is because there is a hillside uh, outside of Arusha in Tanzania called the Marilani Hills. And that's where this stone has been largely mined was in that area. And it happens to be the same physical area where Tanzanite is mined. That's how I know the Marilani Hills so well. I actually went to the mines there years ago. And the, one of the, the things that gives the blue color to tanzanite is something called vanadium. And in the case of the Marilani Mint, you're going to have some chrome and you're going to also have some vanadium lending to that color. Think of it as the lighter shade of green color to its cousin, the Savorite Garnet. Well, next is something called the Mali Garnet, M-A-L-I. And the reason it's called the Mali Garnet is it was first discovered in the 1990s in Mali, and that's how it got its name. Now, the Mali garnet is a blend of, a, of grossular and andradite garnets, and that happens sometimes in nature. It actually, actually happens with uh, almondine and pie rope, and I'll talk about that next week. But it's a blend of those two. Uh, it is still the only place that that gem has ever been discovered. Now, what is the color range? It can range from a green to a yellowish green, to a yellow, to a gold, and even something as deep as a brown garnet. Beautiful, beautiful colors, great brightness because of that refractive index. And again, a little bit more probably on the expensive side if you're collecting the Molly garnet. And now we come to the final member of the Grossular garnet group, and it is Savorite Garnet. It is one of my favorite, not just Garnet, it's one of my favorite gemstones on planet Earth. Those of you who have uh, watched me do some of these shows, I've talked about the fact that probably Savorite and Pyrope are two of my favorite gems on the planet, and they're both from the Garnet group of, uh, of gemstones. Now, why do they call it Savorite Garnet? First of all, what is Savorite Garnet? Savorite Garnet is a spectacularly bright, sparkly green gemstone. In fact, I had this one of my prized uh, possessions. I wanted to show you a live shot. That is a Savorite garnet I bought at a gem show years ago. Still haven't set it in anything. It's just, it's just a collector stone to me. That is almost looks like the sparkle of what a green diamond would look like. So it has that spectacular color. The reason they call it Savorite is it was first discovered in Savo National Park, which is in Kenya. And actually, the, the whole of Savo National Park extended into Tanzania as well. Uh, there's a place there called Ngorongoro Crater, and it's that somewhere where I filmed when I was uh, doing the Tanzanite mines. We went on a safari there. Uh, that's now its own uh, entity in Tanzania. But Savo National Park is where this gemstone, the Savorite Garnet, was first discovered. It is a spectacular green color. And again, those trace elements in there are going to be very, very much 
the chrome. Remember the chrome, whether you're talking about chrome diopside or whether you're talking about an emerald. An emerald is a barrel that is cut, the green color comes from chrome. And it's the same with the Savorite Garnet. It is rich in chrome. Now there's a downside to that. And this goes with emeralds and it also goes with um, uh, chrome diopside. The great thing about the chrome is it gives the most spectacular color green that any gemstone can want. Downside of the chrome is the chrome actually inhibits the growth potential of that crystal. So that is why with, and I think this one that I showed you is right around a carat in the Savorite Garnet. Finding something over a carat in Savorite Garnet is very rare. And every millimeter size you go up, that price is gonna go up exponentially. So if you're looking for a big chrome, oh, I'm sorry, a Savorite Garnet, expect to pay a pretty well king's ransom for that privilege. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the Grostular Garnet. We only have one more lesson in our Minister Seers of Garnet that'll be coming up next week. Now, remember, if you have not yet done so, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. It doesn't cost you a thing. It's free. My goal is to be the largest weekly free gem classes on YouTube. And with your help, you can get me there. Well, thanks again for watching. I will see you all next week with more in our final lesson on the Garnet Group.